Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining this dental learning webinar. I'm Joe Riley, the Director of Content for Dental Learning. This evening's webinar on practice data protection is going to include topics such as the threats to the dental practice, how to protect against a data breach, potential risks associated with a data breach, and the importance of having a redundant backup for your data. Tech Central is the primary sponsor of this evening's webinar, and they are joined by two of their partners, WatchGuard and Citerra, to bring us the information for tonight. So, some quick introductions. We're joined by Tony Dagonia from WatchGuard Technologies and Jeff Denworth from Citerra. And Brian Caverly is the National Sales Manager for Tech Central. I would like to thank all of you for being here with us this evening. During the next hour, Tech Central and their partners are going to provide information about the importance of data security and how you can protect yourself from inevitable attacks, as well as how to cut down on the discover and recovery time after a breach. There are a handful of widgets at the bottom of the screen. Please feel free to submit questions in the Q&A box, share content on social media using the share widget, or download content from the content widget. Also, there will be a few poll questions as we go during the presentation, and you will be able to highlight those right on the slides. The first presenter this evening is Tony Dagonia, the sales engineer at WatchGuard Technologies. Tony has worked for a variety of technology-based companies, including telecom, IT outsourcing, and managed services providers. This experience has enabled him to really have a 360-degree view of the business and engineering requirements of data and network security for both WatchGuard and their partners. I'll turn it over now to Tony. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Tony Dagonia, and I am the WatchGuard Regional Sales Engineer for the South Central United States. Today we're going to talk about how to protect your dental practice from cybercrime. Today's cyber threats are more sophisticated than ever. Cyber criminals may be hacktivists with social agendas or organized identity theft rings seeking your patient's financial or personal data. While technology can make your dental office more efficient, there is a dark side. Only 42% of small businesses rank cybersecurity as very important to their business. 50% of small businesses have been victims of cyber attacks. With an average cost of $20,752 per attack. The reality is, According to the National Cybersecurity Alliance, one in five small businesses falls victim to cybercrime each year. And of those, some 60% go out of business within six months after an attack. Breaches keep increasing. We're getting smarter, but still have our doors open to theft. As the graphics show from two, 2013 to 2014, there was a 48% increase in data breaches across all businesses, with a 78% increase in the number of records stolen. The interesting part is that from 2014 to 2015, there was a 10% increase in the number of breaches, but the number of records stolen decreased significantly. This is primarily attributed to the types of victims that were targeted from 2014 to 2015. Smaller businesses generally yield smaller record counts. However, that does not devalue the breach overall, as SMB victims are less likely to be on the radar of law enforcement. The 2016 stats are for Q1 only, but 2016 is rounding out to be a big year for data breaches and records lost. Human error causes the majority of PHI data breaches and healthcare employees cause three times as many breaches as external attacks. Healthcare organizations make up roughly 33% of all data security breaches across all industries, making healthcare the most breached industry in the U.S. Healthcare employees cause three times as many breaches as external attacks. The most common causes of data breaches and loss are in healthcare are unauthorized access or disclosure, lost records and devices, improper disposal of records, theft, and hacking. A significant proportion of healthcare breaches are a result of lost or stolen mobile devices, tablets, and laptops. 
2014 woke us up. Headlines were on the big breaches, leaving small businesses with a false sense of security. Major breaches made huge headlines, such as Target, eBay, Home Depot, Michaels, and many others. The big lesson learned was that attackers were focusing on chain of trust attacks. What that means is that attackers actually go after smaller businesses that have access to the larger businesses in order to gain access to them. In the case of Target, their breach occurred because of a security deficiency in their HVAC vendor, which allowed the hackers to gain access to Target systems through the vendor system, thus giving the hackers access to Target's POS and financial systems. The end result was that the CEO and CIO both left the company. Ransomware. A whole new vocabulary has been created because of cybercrime. Words such as hacking, botnet, phishing, adware, social engineering, zero-day exploits, spoofing, watering hole, and hacktivists. But the scariest of the plethora of new words absolutely has to be ransomware. Ransomware is a form of computer malware that restricts access to your computer and its information while demanding you pay a ransom to regain access. Ransomware's rise started in 2013 with programs such as CryptoLocker, CTB Locker, Crypto Wall, Locky, and many others. Ransomware has been called the largest scale extortion in the history of mankind. It's been around since the late 80s and was deployed originally on floppy disks. Polymorphic variations make it much more difficult to detect than normal malware. Today, the Bitcoin ransom's average is $500 but they do range from $300 to $10,000. Breaches are launched from a number of platforms that have proven to be very popular amongst cyber criminals. The most popular and effective attack vectors are spear phishing. It's a, ma it's a mature version of phishing. It specifically targets its victims with personal information via email. The email appears to be from someone you know. It includes your name, looks very official. Common attacks come in the form of FedEx notifications, invoices, and purchase orders. There are also watering holes, which take advantage of vulnerabilities in browsers and breach site visitors as they are browsing the affected website. There are also chain of trust attacks. These are very sophisticated attacks. In one instance, RSA's authentication token technology was stolen and used to get into Lockheed Martin in an assumed attempt to gain access to the Department of Defense. Lockheed Martin discovered the breach, which prevented it from going further. Here we have a prime example of the way that phishing has evolved. Just a few years ago, phishing email was a simple text-based email attempting to deceive the recipient. Today's phishing email comes with full colors, logos, and even branded links to further the deception. Cyber criminals are getting smarter. They've recently started inserting malicious code into legitimate online advertising so that when a user visits a legitimate website and sees or clicks on legitimate advertisements from a reputable ad network, they are still getting infected. This is similar to a watering hole, but is malware, and it's even more difficult to detect because everything around it is legitimate and validated. The cybersecurity industry has seen about a 325% increase in malvertising attacks in the past year. 
One of the hottest trends in technology in the past decade has to be the Internet of Things, or IoT. IoT is comprised of technology being embedded in just about everything. Everything is being connected to the Internet in some way. In 2015, about 3 billion IoT devices were connected to the Internet. By the end of 2020, that number will increase to about 25 billion. There are approximately 50 plus devices in a vehicle equipped with OnStar or similar systems that connect to the Internet. Examples of products with embedded computers that can be controlled by a smartphone or smart thermostat, Nest is most recognizable. It helps save on energy by controlling the temperature from a phone and adding fire alarms and other devices. Digital lighting mainly Philips LED bulbs, are not just for mood lighting, color and brightness, but blink if a connected security system detects an intruder. They can also be connected to Netflix to change lighting based on a movie scene color palette. And then there's Tesla. If a repair is needed, Tesla autonomously schedules a valet to pick the vehicle up and take to a take it to a Tesla facility. Other types of embedded computers that connect to the Internet to gather and pass information are smart roads, with sensors in the roads helping traffic when accidents or traffic jams or climate issues arise. Dash buttons from Amazon. There's over 100 different buttons available for various things. Garage door openers. It can tell the time a door is open and closed. This is great for kids and bad guys as well. The following stats are taken from HP's Internet of Things research study in 2015. 90% of devices collected at least one piece of personal information via the device, the cloud, or its mobile app. Six out of 10 devices that provide a user interface were vulnerable to a range of issues such as weak credentials. 80% of devices, along with the cloud and mobile app components, failed to require passwords of a sufficient complexity and length. 70% of devices, along with the cloud and mobile applications, Enable an attacker to identify valid user accounts through account enumeration. And 70% of devices use unencrypted network services. Never mind the exact numbers here, but this is a chart from Wiggle.net that tracks the number of new Wi-Fi networks per day within the global network of participants. We're officially in hockey stick growth period. Wi-Fi is growing exponentially. Would you believe we have passed the 10 billion mark in Wi-Fi devices sold last year? Of these Wi-Fi networks, public hotspots are a huge contributor. This data is from iPass, and as you can see, this screenshot is from mid-April. We're up to 110 million public hotspots in the world. And check out these growth numbers. The number of Wi-Fi hotspots in Europe has grown over 288% since 2013. And North America is on fire with over 4,000% growth in just, the, just a few years' time. Wi-Fi is easy. Secure Wi-Fi is the challenge. Here are a few examples of the challenges Wi-Fi brings to your practice, especially when providing guest Wi-Fi without taking the appropriate security measures. Wi-Fi password cracking. APs that still use older protocols like WEP make for easy targets. Rogue hotspots. Cyber criminals enable a foreign AP near your hotspot with a matching SSID, 
inviting unsuspecting customers to log in. Planting malware. Hackers plant a back door on your network, allowing them to return at a later date and steal sensitive information. Eavesdropping. Having private communications detected or packet sniffed by nosy cyber snoops while on an unprotected wireless network. Data theft. Joining a wireless network puts users at risk of losing private documents that may contain highly sensitive information to cyber thieves. Inappropriate or illegal usage. Adult or extremist content and illegal downloads can leave businesses open to copyright infringement infringement lawsuits. Bad neighbors. Mobile attacks like Android stage fright can spread from guest to guest even if victim zero is oblivious to the outbreak. There are many examples of the effects of ransomware on business. Ransomware can take a devastating toll on any organization that does not take cybersecurity seriously. Some of these examples include law firms, hospitals, Hollywood Presbyterian was recently infected by locking, schools, both a New Jersey school district as well as Horry School District in South Carolina were infected, while Horry School District recently paid $8,500 to become uninfected. Police, Tewksbury, Massachusetts PD was infected with a malware variant. Once infected, they requested help from the FBI, Homeland Security, the Massachusetts State Police, and a private information security firm. After five days, none of these organizations could decrypt the infected machines. In this particular case, the FBI, after a great deal of effort, paid the ransom of about $500 in bitcoins. Why didn't they just reinstall a backup? Their latest backup was on a corrupted hard drive, and the last good backup was over 18 months old. We do not recommend paying the ransom if at all possible. Use a backup from an older system if necessary. Once you pay, you're encouraging the extortion. As well, there is no guarantee that the malware is removed. The criminals can easily come back and demand more money. Now that you know your dental practice may be at risk, let's talk about some steps to protect it from cybercrime. A full security solution has multiple layers. WatchGuard likes to use the term defense in depth. There are many different security solutions, and none of them are a silver bullet that will solve all problems. You may have heard of some of them firewalls, antivirus, or anti-spam. All of them are valued, but we say you need all of them. No single defense will protect you completely from computer attacks. Step one, upgrade your protection. Legacy defense strategies such as a simple firewall aren't enough anymore. Upgrade to the protection of a next generation firewall or unified threat management device that combines all of today's necessary defenses in a single, easy to manage and cost effective appliance. For example, the WatchGuard platform delivers data defenses in multiple categories such as user identity aware controls, advanced persistent threat protection, data loss prevention, web content filtering, gateway antivirus, application control, reputation-enabled defense, spam blocker, and intrusion prevention. WatchGuard's proxy-based network inspection runs on top of industry standard hardware and virtualization platforms such as Freescale, Intel, VMware, and Microsoft Windows Hyper-V. WatchGuard's architecture is built on a modular structure to support a vendor agnostic strategy. WatchGuard supports multiple CPU partners for best fit to specific product lines, as well as proven best of breed software components with advanced integration. UTM firmware that spans across all hardware platforms, 
leading UTM performance at each price point, and powerful centralized management and visibility tools, such as WatchGuard System Manager and our award-winning Dimension Logging and Visibility Platform. The more layers of defense you create to prevent different types of cyber attacks, the more you maximize your protection. Each link in a hacker's chain of attack represents an opportunity for you to implement a defense. The kill chain consists of six actions performed by a cyber criminal or hacker in order to access data in your network. They consist of reconnaissance, learning about the target using many techniques, delivery, actually transmitting the malware via some communications vector, Compromise or exploitation, taking advantage of some software or human weakness to get the malware to run. Infection or installation, the malware establishes persistence of an individual host. Command and control or C2, the malware calls home providing attacker control. Exfiltration, the hacker steals or does whatever he was planning on doing. Small businesses are breached every day, but a third of them admit to being uncertain about whether or not they were attacked. For both small and large organizations, it takes an average of 80 days for businesses to notice they've been breached. By that time, the damage is already done. Often these breaches are missed because of too much security data. Since you can never have a perfect defense, the third critical step in your security strategy is to implement discovery and response tools to help you see and handle the incidents that get past your gates. You need a tool that brings the data from all of your security controls together and correlates different security triggers into a single incident so you don't miss the signs of a sophisticated multi-vector attack. To sum up my presentation today, I've put together a list of nine things to do to make your data and business more secure from a cyber attack. Number one, use layered defenses to prevent attacks. Number two, don't click on links or open documents and emails that you aren't sure of. Number three, don't email PII or PHI via unsecure or private email systems. Number four, create a technology policy for your practice that enables you to meet HIPAA and other electronic records related regulatory requirements. Number five, educate your employees on the policy and make them accountable. Number six, perform a security risk assessment or SRA and use it to improve your security. Number seven, don't provide unsecure guest Wi-Fi, ever. Number eight, segregate your networks and consistently update your software. Number nine, implement a good backup solution and test it regularly. On behalf of WatchGuard, I want to thank you for joining us for the presentation today. Please feel free to reach out to Henry Schein Tech Central with any questions about the presentation that you may have, and we will be glad to work on getting you an answer to your inquiries as soon as possible. Have a great day. Thank you, Tony. It's Joe Riley just hopping back in here again to give us an opportunity to answer a few of the Q&As which have come in. Remember, if you'd like some questions answered, please type them in the Q&A box. We'll get to what we can tonight. And anything we can't get to, we will follow up with you in an email. So keep those questions coming, and let's see what the first question is. Okay, a great first question has come in. So what are the two most important things I can do to secure my company's network from viruses, malware, and ransomware? So what would you say is the best place to start, Tony? Thanks, Joe. That's a great question. Frankly, the answer is twofold. First, make a sound defense in depth plan with good network policies and procedures that includes a Tech Central recommended WatchGuard UTM firewall device. 
As a part of your plan, your IT staff or partners should be delivering timely reports so that you know in common terms what's going on. Then execu execute the plan. Secondly, invest in cybersecurity and compliance training for your staff and employees. PCI, HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, GLBA, and many other compliance organizations have a plethora of resources for employee training to keep your business safe from employee-based breaches. Most of the training is geared towards the employee's role, whether it's the CEO or the receptionist. Okay, a few people have chimed in with this question, so let's answer this one. The question is, with all the levels of protection you speak about, how is it that network infections such as malware and ransomware still occur? Simply put, in most cases, infections ha happen because employees are insufficiently trained on what to look for when using their network devices, whether it is a PC, a smartphone, or tablet. With just a few, uh, very few exceptions, most users get infected by malware simply because they allow it to happen by opening an infected file or clicking a link they aren't sure of. Uh, some even occur by uh, employees visiting sites that should be off limits on a corporate network. Uh, but the bottom line is, is generally speaking, uh, it happens because uh, the employee lets the infection in. Tony, thank you for your answers to those questions. Very much appreciated. We're going to turn it over now to Jeff Denworth. He's the Senior Vice President for Citera. He has over a decade of experience with big data and cloud storage technologies. So, Jeff, take it away. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much for the intro. Okay, so now Tony's done a great job of taking you through all of the considerations that you need to be thinking about as you look to protect the digital perimeter of your practice. Um, but you also have a large amount of data that's sitting in that practice. That data is, is critical to your business. And um, let's talk a little bit about how the healthcare industry and um, the dental industry think about protecting that data um, for immediate recovery and long-term data preservation and some of the challenges that they face as, um, as they think about what could possibly go wrong. And so um, typically it's easy to think about um, natural disasters as being uh, a key contributor to data loss um, and to uh, potentially disrupting your practice's operations uh, because of all sorts of different um, elements that conspire against your organization, such as, uh, let's say in this case, a fire. Floods are another consideration that um, uh, you need to be mindful of, particularly if you're in uh, flood zones and places like that. If you're by large bodies of water, perhaps maybe even tsunamis are, uh, are a consideration. And then, of course, if you're somewhere near um, New Mexico or <laughs> some other uh, place far out, then... Uh, then you have to worry about things like UFOs. But the most important thing to consider in all of this is that um, with respect to natural disasters, um, these are actually statistically insignificant as a threat to your practice's business continuity versus the number one contributor to business data loss that dental practices are facing today. And so what is this threat that, that lives within um, the dental practice that, that really is uh, resulting in the, the highest probability of data loss? Well, it's actually um, in this picture. And if you look really closely, uh, it's right in the background there, uh, right on this uh, technician's desk, and it's your keyboard. And why do I say this? Well, there's two buttons in particular that... Um, that are the most troublesome on your keyboard. Uh, the first is the delete key. The second is the enter key. Uh, and uh, a recent report by the IT Policy Compliance Group 
determined that 75% of all data loss is actually due to human error. We can look at human error in two different ways um, in how they actually result in data loss in a, in a dental practice. So the first is, uh, is accidental deletion of data. Uh, and then the second, which is much more perilous these days, is um, uh, the, uh, the possibility of opening a file or going to a website or doing something um, accidental that results in the, uh, the opening of a virus um, that is executed via macro scripts in a file that, that you potentially get access to. So let's look at these. So I think the, the argument for, um, for, uh, for, for accidental deletion is pretty simple, but the whole topic of ransomware, as Tony mentioned, is, um, is becoming a very, very significant issue for businesses. Um, and despite even the best perimeter security solutions that an organization can, um, can devise, it's still, um, there's always the chance that uh, an organization could potentially be hit by some sort of ransomware event. And so um, ransomware is effectively the infiltration of a virus into a network, onto users or, um, or office computers when a user clicks on a link that he or she shouldn't. Um, and a file is downloaded that has some sort of malicious code. What you see on the screen here is an example of a ransomware message that you may receive if your system becomes compromised. Most ransomware software emerges from places like Russia, and um, users typically must pay with Bitcoin to get their files back. Average computer cost is $100 to $500 to decrypt, um, and offices or practices with lots of computers, the, the bill can get quite significant. According to the FBI, last year there was about $24 million paid in ransom um, where, uh, I guess, ransom payments to hackers around the world. Um, and so if I look at 2016, in the first quarter of the year, um, organizations paid out ransom in excess of $200 million. So $24 million in 2015 total in the first quarter of this year um, organizations are dealing with a $200 million bill to pay to these hackers. Um, and so what this is, is it's effectively about a 35% or 35x or 35 times increase um, in the amount of incidents. Uh, and this is assuming that that trend won't continue to compound. And if I just take that $209 million and trend it out throughout the year, you're dealing with nearly a billion dollar business in ransomware uh, for 2016. And so <clears throat> why would an organization pay? Well, um, for a variety of reasons. The most important is that they don't have any other means to recover their data. Oh. So, um, so we're finding that, um, that there are a number of events within the market that are really uh, encouraging um, these hackers to, uh, to, to, to increase their efforts. Uh, and the most notable one is actually uh, an, a breach that happened earlier this year um, at the Hollywood Presbyterian Medical Center. Um, and in this event, what happened was the, essentially the backbone of the medical center was completely disabled. Um, doctors couldn't access their patient files, um, the organization was writing prescriptions and faxing them to, um, to, to pharmacies. Uh, patients were being diverted away from the hospital altogether uh, because they couldn't get the proper treatment that they needed during the period where um, the um, uh, medical record systems were essentially offline and completely hijacked by the, rancers, uh, the ransomers. So um, this is a, essentially a 10-day outage um, and the rumor is that uh, the, the bill was initially around $3.4 million uh, in ransom payments that the hackers had asked for uh, in order to get all of the hospital systems back online. Um, what ultimately ended up happening is that the medical center paid $17,000 in bitcoins um, 
to the uh, to the the hackers or the attackers. And so what that did is it is essentially validated a business model um, that um, that that proves to these nefarious organizations that there is money to be made from people that don't have the right protections for their data and for their systems. Now, um, all of that is, is kind of crystallized if you look at this, uh, this chart here, where you can see that um, uh, as, the, as the market becomes more and more lucrative for uh, ransomware and as attackers are more able to penetrate networks and into organizations, and as they know they're going to get paid back, um, what they're doing is they're innovating and engineering more and more different types of programs that are designed to infiltrate the network. So the problem is only increasing throughout the year. The FBI lays out a pretty um, explicit prescription on all the things that you should do in order to prepare your organization to, de to deal with the ransomware threat. Um, there's things that you do beforehand that are considered preventative measures, um, like Tony just talked about, really around securing your organization, training your organization, and making sure that you have a very strong perimeter. But what if in the off chance um, uh, some sort of virus gets through? How do you ensure business continuity when, um, when you've been hit with a ransomware attack? Well, FBI's number one recommendation is to back up your data regularly and to verify the integrity of these backups. In addition to that, they recommend that you back up your uh, information to a network that, or a computer that is disconnected from the computer that could potentially be hit by a ransomware attack. So in short, don't just hook up a USB drive to your computer and back, back up to a disk that's connected to that computer because it could be equally subject to um, encryption or, 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 uh, or, or ransom. So that's really where um, CTERRA comes in. In conjunction with Henry Schein, we are providing um, uh, a product that, that we call a cloud storage gateway. And what this is is a all-in-one backup appliance um, that also serves as an office file server. Uh, so in one solution, what you get is the ability to back up your critical systems and all of your data to this appliance that may live on workstations or servers external to the appliance. But because it's also a file server, it means that you can also put all of the doc documents that you want to store on the network and share across a collection of users into one system. Um, our, our base model supports up to four terabytes of usable capacity. This is the product um, that we're delivering to uh, the, the good majority of customers that we're working with, with Henry Schein. And um, those disks locally are mirrored so that if one were to fail, um, the other would be able to sustain operations. Um, and of course, this is part of a larger kind of cloud-oriented model where um, while we support 50 users per office and those users are able to access their files and back up their files to this device, it's also a cloud-connected solution where all of your data is securely backed up over um, a wide area network to a Henry Schein off-site data center. Just to give you a little perspective on how the solution works, um, first, as a, as a file server, um, we have the ability to expose all of the normal um, protocols that your computers within your office environment expect to talk over the network to to store and share their files. Um, these include support for Windows systems, for um, Apple systems, and even, um, even Linux computers. Um, but the gateways also come pre-configured with CTERRA workstation and server data protection agents. These are um, small little pieces of software that you would put on systems external to our appliances. Um, and they would be um, responsible for essentially taking incremental snapshots of that system and backing them up to the appliance. Gateways are provided in um, both uh, uh, in both modes, and um, they also support all of the uh, different types of protocols that organizations would um, need to also manage all of their security practice. Um, backups can be file level 
or bare metal. And server backups even have support for application-aware backup of things such as SQL Server, Exchange, SharePoint, Active Directory, so it's, it's application-aware in a way. As your, um, as your data is uh, stored into the appliance, it's stored very securely using AES 256-bit encryption. Um, and then as it's um, being sent over to the Henry Schein um, Cloud Data Center, uh, it is, um, it's, uh, it's deduplicated to make sure that it's extremely efficient, that data is compressed, and then using TLS encryption, it's stored, um, it's shipped over the wire and stored into the Henry Schein Data Center. And um, it's a flexible solution in terms of how you think about data protection, where you can keep the most recent snapshots of your data and of your systems that you're backing up to the appliance, their data in the appliance. Um, and then you can optimize the solution so that the long-term retention of your data actually happens um, in the cloud. So, uh, so you can make sure that you're uh, able to recover very quickly using a local on-premises appliance, but all of your snapshots uh, for however long you'd like are stored in the cloud so that they're equally recoverable in the case of either an appliance or an office outage. So in essence, what the solution allows you to do is to eliminate the need for an independent local um, file server, and it also allows you to eliminate the need for a dedicated and um, sometimes complex configuration of backup software and um, tape-based backup all in one solution. And because it has the ability to automatically protect its data via uh, a Henry Schein um, cloud data protection model, what that means is that it's also eliminating the need for tape-based uh, off-site vaulting and recovery services, which are both manual, complex, and oftentimes take a lot of time to recover your data from. In addition to that, um, as you think about protecting your organization from accidental deletion or ransomware or viruses or what have you, um, the system supports very, very easy tools to recover previous versions of your files or previous full system images um, at the click of a button. So we have a, a web-based console that we call the CTERRA portal. And um, the appliance has the ability to, uh, to, to recover full snapshots locally. Uh, and if they're not local, um, they'll go to the cloud and do the recovery for you. Or you can simply log into a web browser and re retrieve full systems or full files uh, with just the click of a button. And you can go back to any point in time with respect to uh, the version of files that you want to recover from. In addition to browser-based access to your files or your backups, the solution also supports the ability to access files with file level granularity uh, or previous versions of your files through a mobile device. And so Citera provides the ability to really access your data anywhere um, via leading web browsers and leading mobile smartphone platforms as well as tablets. So we have um, applications that can be deployed for Android, uh, for iOS, smartphones, and tablets, as well as for Windows phones, uh, where uh, with a, a swipe of the thumb, you can go and you can access your files, your backups, uh, and it's all very, very uh, easy to use and, uh, and user-friendly. So what it does is it ensures that you don't need to be at your office even to be able to get to your most precious data. The files are stored using um, a highly secure AES 256-bit encryption. Um, the solution supports uh, enterprise authentication onto your network if you're using uh, domain services like Active Directory or even the LDAP protocol. 
we enable um, the solution to uh, to essentially authenticate with your security management systems uh, and help you comply with regulations. The backup software that comes pre-configured with the appliances is designed really for user self-service and is very easy to use. And so what does that mean? Well, the agent allows um, for special operations to happen on the desktop. Uh, and um, essentially what happens is just by right-clicking on the files or folders that you're looking to protect, you can do data protection operations right on top of them. You can decide uh, what, um, what files you want protected. You can go and search through what's called um, previous versions that's available on uh, Windows systems by just right-clicking on the files. Um, and as, as I mentioned earlier, in the cases where you don't have access to a specific device or an appliance or um, even a mobile device, you can always go online to a browser and access previous versions of your backed up files um, via the, the web. And so, in essence, what it is, is it's kind of a consumer-grade experience with extremely high levels of security that enables uh, users to, to manage their own data protection agenda um, while still providing you with the levels of control that you need to ensure long-term data protection. And so we're very happy to introduce the CTERRA solution as part of the Henry Schein portfolio and uh, a leading platform for helping organizations minimize the threat of any natural or man-made data disaster uh, and allows you to recover data in pretty much real time using easy-to-use, cost-effective cloud technologies uh, where everything is stored securely in the Henry Schein, uh, Henry Schein cloud. So let's take a little bit of questions and answers. Uh, the first one is, um, okay, so it's uh, what backup frequency do you recommend? So the um, the Henry Schein CTERRA solution is, is um, essentially configured with a default mode um, where essentially it's, it's built so that uh, users and organizations can back up their data just about every 24 hours. Um, for especially paranoid customers, or if you're working on a lot of data in real time and want to be able to recover from it um, with, uh, with even uh, smaller granularity than 24 hours, um, there are additional backup options where you can back up with a greater level of frequency. Um, this, the, the, the solution that we're providing is entirely configurable with respect to this. And you should also remember that the solution is designed so that you don't have to keep all those backups on your local appliance that's capacity constrained. Um, you can equally just put your longer term um, backups and versions of your files and uh, manage them into the Henry Schein cloud. So, um, so we're, we're optimizing capacity locally while still providing long term uh, retention and availability uh, through archiving the longer term backups to the cloud. Okay, so next question. Um, how long do you recommend that the data be protected for? That's a good question. Okay, so our, our standard um, configuration that we're offering with, with Henry Schein is um, is essentially two years of data protection, which is um, which is kind of the standard for the industry. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, just as with the the, um, the backup frequency, uh, with this solution, you also have the ability to configure something entirely to your preferences. So if uh, if two years is not enough for you, please feel free to contact Henry Shine, and uh, we can configure something uh, in a program to to suit your needs. Okay, here's an interesting question that's come over. Um, where do I start with protecting my office, and how do I know where I am vulnerable? I'll tell you what, let's, let's turn this one over to Brian Caverly. Um, Brian, you're the Tech Central National Sales Manager. Give me your insights on this, please. Well, Tech Central offers several turnkey security solutions. 
we recommend you have one of our trained professionals come to your office and perform a comprehensive network assessment. Our team will help evaluate the current technology in your practice and help to develop a plan for upgrades and new additions over the next several years. Our partners also offer security risk assessments that are required by HIPAA to help your practice identify possible security threats associated with PHI. You can call our team at 877-483-0382 or visit www.hstechcentral.com slash protect your practice to find out more. Thank you all for having attended tonight. If you have asked any questions during the course of the webinar in the Q&A box and we didn't get to them, Tech Central will be reaching out to you by email in the next couple of days to make sure that you have all of the information that you're requesting. If you want any more information, there's a website link on this slide, or you can contact their support team. The number is 877-483-0382. I really want to thank our presenters and everyone for being here tonight. For other webinar and educational opportunities, please visit us at www.dentallearning.net. Thank you all so much for being here and have a great evening.